While Shiata is typically a long day trip from Siwa, it felt like we had really dove deep into the Great Sand Sea, but this is just the starting point. From here we don't expect to see any civilization for at least a week depending on how fast we move off-road, which at times can be pretty treacherous. So, off we go. It's easy to enter and to go out in the Great Sand Sea, but you have to go through some rules. Rule one, go with someone who knows. Not just someone with a 4x4 and a GPS, someone who knows where to go, how to get there, what to bring, and always knows what to do. We're about 100K into the Great Sand Sea and uh, stopped for some snacks and a 360 view of absolutely nothing. I like it. Rule two, respect the desert. Whatever you need, bring more of it. This is about 220K in. Just more and more desolate, I guess. And rule three, expect the unexpected. You can make a schedule, just don't expect to stick to it. Case in point. See, this isn't something new. This isn't something bad. This is the great sea of sand. I don't care what kind of car you got, what kind of tires you have on your car. Eventually everybody has to push a little bit. I mean, look at the sand, it's so soft. Ah, uh, sand's hot, man. You know, certain dunes, if the sun's been hitting it all day, there's some kind of phenomenon with the sand and the heat where it starts to build up static electricity. The sand, because there's static in there, it starts to kind of lift apart. It's not sitting on itself. So when you're running through the desert in the Great Sea and you're doing like 60 miles an hour, you're flying and all of a sudden you're doing 30 miles an hour like that, you know, because you hit one of these patches that looks exactly like the rest of the sand you're running on. So the sand mat procedure. Yella, yella. Following those few rules should be enough to get you in. Hopefully it's enough to get you out. Oh, and one more thing. Enjoy it. I mean, there's no turning back now, right? Life's great.